Hello again, gamers. Welcome back for another Battletech Battle Report. I'm the Board Game Captain, and this is... Nick Ferguson. And we are down here in... Uh, this is Cornelius, North Carolina, and we are at Parker, Banner, Kent, and Wayne to be filming a Battle Report for Battletech. We are doing a 12,000 Battle Value Battle Report in the Civil War time period. I will be playing my first Kestrel Grenadiers under House Davian. And I will be playing Alpha Galaxy and Delta Galaxy of Clan Hell's Forces. And uh, yeah, and we're going to be getting into it. So before we get started, I do want to say I'm going to put a little link above me here to a video I've done as a spotlight on this store, on uh, Parker, Banner, Kent, and Wayne. Check that out. This place is really cool. If you're in the area, come by and play games here. They have a huge area to play and buy stuff. And remember, support your local game store. But without any further ado, we're going to get into our constructed lances and stars. Uh, let me ask you, Nick, do you want to go first or second on these? Um, I'll go second, so that way I can see a little bit better idea on how you present. Fair enough. All right, so I made two lances for the 12,000 battle value. So my first lance here, let me just pull them out, is a command lance. Now my command lance is as follows. I have, uh, to lead off the command lance, and it is the command mac of the command lance, I have the Night Star NSR9J. Uh, this beast has two Gauss rifles, an ER PPC, and some medium pulse lasers. It is one of my favorite mechs in the game, and I absolutely adore it. Uh, and it will be getting my custom mech warrior, which I'm going to talk about in a minute when I'm done with my lances. Now, uh, I am also backing this mech up in the command lance with the Catapult CP. LTC1B, that's Bravo. This is the old Royal version of the Catapult. It's similar to the basic version, except that it has double heat sinks, so it can actually afford to fire all those medium lasers and LRM-15s without crazy overheating. So I, you know, I kind of appreciate the better heat sinking capacity there. Next, we have the Raptor, uh, the Raptor RTX 108. This is the version of the Raptor with the triple SRM-6s, and I have swapped out one ammo bin for Inferno rounds because of course I did. <laughs> and then I have the Hunchback HBK5S. This is a Civil War era version of the Hunchback that has 464 movement. It has an LB20X auto cannon, two medium pulse lasers and a small laser. Love this version because you can pop up, drop in behind you and hit you in the rear. Of course, as a command lance, um, this lance will allow me to reroll initiative rolls as long as the lance commander survives. And I have to pick two of these mechs to be able to do combat intuition with, and I'm going to be doing that with the Hunchback and the Raptor. So uh, again, as a quick reminder on how combat intuition works, at the end of certain turns I can take an injury to my pilot so that in the next turn I can either wait to see everyone else go before moving or I can actually in interrupt turn order to have one of them go before someone else goes and do their moving, shooting, and melee all right then, and if it's before that other mech moved, it even will ignore all movement modifiers on that mech. Of course, it's dangerous to do more than once because you do have to take an injury on the mech warrior each time you do it, and there's that chance to fall unconscious. Um, so it is, it, is a, it is an incredibly possibly powerful ability, but also very worrisome ability. Now, my second lance to back up my command lance is a battle lance. Uh, my battle lance is... Uh, led by an Atlas AS7S2. This is the version of the Atlas with the heavy Gauss rifle, Guardian ECM suite, an LRM-15 with an Artemis 4 and two ER large lasers. It is a beast. And then to back him up, we have a Locust LCT-3S. That's the two-streak SRM-2s and a medium laser. Nice little scout mech. We have the Wolverine WVR-7K with its twin SRM-6s, large pulse laser, small pulse laser, and medium pulse laser. Um, really like this version of the Wolverine, and also I swapped out one of its ammo bins for Inferno Rounds as well, because of course I did. And then finally, we have my favorite version of the Rifleman ever, is a uh, Civil War era version of the Rifleman, so I had to include him. Uh, this is the Rifleman RFL8D. He comes with twin rotary autocannon 5s and ER medium lasers. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I'm just going to quickly mention is uh, I gave Nick the option for the cost on the Mac Warriors. He had his daughter decide for us what the cost would be, and she chose three. And I chose to take Daniel Whalen. So Daniel Whalen is a 3-4 uh, Mac Warrior and has the ability Weapon Specialist Gauss Rifle, and they are on my Night Stars so that my Night Stars 
Gauss rifles will be too easier to hit their target uh, for every shot and therefore very likely to connect. Okay, Nick, what do you got? All right. Um, I chose uh, Clan Star. Uh, first off, a Rifleman 2C. Uh, again, Ooh. that's got uh, four large pulse lasers. I got two in each arm. So, again, I love the Rifleman. Oh. And that's going to be some long distance. Oh, hurt. yes, it will. Um, I have the Warhawk or Masakari C. Um, that comes equipped with two ER PPCs, two large pulse lasers, and a targeting computer. Um, and that will have my commander in it. So again, that's a lot of uh, long range, long distance hate. Uh, oh, wow. D, um, I love the linebacker D. It is a, um, a, what I call a knife fighter. It has four streak SRM6s. Two ER medium lasers, one ER small laser. Okay. Um, this is one of those guys that if you get in close and lock in with four streak SRM sixes, you're gonna find crits or headshots eventually. You certainly will. Uh, another one of my close in guys, I call him close in, but really he's, he's got both short range and long range weaponry, mm. is uh, the Mad Dog or Vulture A variant. It has one ER PPC, one LB5X AC, mm -hmm. and six SRM sixes. So it took out those LRM bins and they replaced them with SRM sixes. Again, mm -hmm. it's a great little short range. Um, do not mess with me. Um, and then I also did a custom mech, uh, as some of you may know from posting. Um, I do love the Bane or Kraken. Uh, I took the original standard model and replaced one arm um, with an ER PVC and Gauss rifle. So it has the five Ultra AC2 in one arm, um, and then the ER PVC and Gauss in another arm. Uh, so pretty much if you wanted DACA and more DACA, it gives you DACA. Um, and then yeah. I, I wanted to replace an arm, um, ideally just to punch holes into something and then use the five AC2s um, to, to find those crits. Um, you know, once you punch holes in something, it doesn't do a lot of good unless you can really start messing with somebody. Um, it does also have a targeting computer. Um, so I'm going to be going for some headshots with that guy. This is a ferocious, ferocious star of mechs. And what, uh, what Lance, uh, uh, star ability did so you get? So I chose for my star ability, the fire star. I have to have at least three that were either missile boats or snipers. That mm -hmm. would be my Bane, um, my, obviously, the Rifleman 2C and the Masakari. Um, and as long as I have at least 75% or those three models, um, I can remove a lot of my distance modifiers. Um, the sniper ability. Um, so at short range, it doesn't affect it. But at medium range, it goes from a two modifier to a one modifier. Yeah. And at long range, it goes from a four modifier to a two modifier. So a lot of these long range benefits that I'll be able to yeah. assign uh, will be able to yeah, hit easier at longer range. This is going to be brutal. Oh, yeah. Um, um, qu a quick note, I don't think I mentioned my second lance, by the way, is a uh, battle lance, which gets six re-rolls either to gunnery or piloting skills any time during the game. I just want to quickly, because I don't think I actually said that. But uh, And which which mech warrior did you pick for your, uh, your commander? So I was actually new to um, using the mech cards. We've gotten them before, and I always usually just set them to the side. I'll use the Alpha Strike cards that come with it when I'm uh, doing Alpha Strike with either my children or uh, helping people learn. Um, but this will be my first chance using them. Um, I had actually looked at Daniel Whalen as well as one of them because, again, for a three-point figure, it's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, I decided to go with Randy Stevens. Uh, he is a 1-2, and he's got a weapon special ability with ER PPCs, which means that all those ER PPCs on the Warhawk will be uh, attacking with a negative 2 yes. modifier. Uh, You're never going to mess with those. At long range, yeah. um, with the sniper ability, if I stack it with that, um, and a gunnery skill of 1, uh, I should be hitting on relatively low numbers. Yes. Which, with 8 targets, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little afraid of that mech right now. I think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna miss all game. That's my prediction. That mech will not miss an ERPPC shot all game. It's gonna be insane. And, and honestly, so the armaments are two ERPPCs and two large pulses, so mm. I'm getting a minus two on both of those. Yes. So essentially, I can just call, consider it a minus two all game long. And, and with a gunnery skill of one, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be ludicrously accurate. All right, so without any further ado, uh, let's jump into the game. Three. Okay, so here we go with turn one of the game. Now, usually turn one in these games is just a lot of uh, moving and positioning and trying to get close and not a lot of shooting. And there was definitely a lot of moving and positioning, but actually there was some shooting going on. Uh, up at the top, my Locust came moving up onto the board. I have some other mechs also trying to move through terrain there to keep themselves covered. In the middle of the board, the Night Star and, and the, the Catapult and a few other mechs started to move up. 
uh, down that center lane to try to eventually get some shots at my enemy. But I kind of underestimated the ability of the Warhawk with its gunnery skill of one and its negative two to hit the targets to actually be able to connect as well as the decent ability for the Kraken to connect. As you can see, the Warhawk connected with the Raptor here and actually did some damage. Also, the Kraken connected with Mighty Night Star and got a lucky headshot doing a wound to warrior now on turn two i panicked a little and really started to try to get up there and close the distance as quickly as possible as you can see i continue moving my guys up the right side running that uh locust as quickly as possible and trying to jump over the hills with my uh more maneuverable mechs following up there while i attempt to get closer with my night star to be able to start to return fire i also turned with my atlas to try to move in while my opponent just sort of uh positioned in a nice distance way to to, to lay down a lot of covering long range fire in a bit of a, a umbrella uh, formation enveloping uh, around from his side of the table uh, with his longer range clan weapons he was able to do that very very well as you can see here we're now taking our shots now mainly my night star and the warhawk were, were really exchanging fire back and forth here uh, the night star was able to connect a little bit but so was the warhawk and i started to get a little afraid that this warhawk was really going to dominate the game because it was able to do quite a bit of damage where it was only really able to do a little bit of damage to the warhawk back my night star was actually starting to get pretty chewed up going into round three it had taken quite a pummeling but i was able to maneuver my raptor to not take more hits now as we continue to maneuver i continued to make sure the raptor was in positions where it was not going to get chewed up where there was enough terrain between my opponent and myself that i was going to hopefully get in and, and unload with some of those inferno rounds i also continued to move up on the right side with the locust but unfortunately as soon as it came out and was able to be seen my enemy turned the warhawk to, to shoot at the locust that was kind of unexpected he was such a cheap target i didn't expect him to actually focus in on him but he did and in round three my uh my night star got shot up my hunchback took some fire my locust got obliterated and i returned a bit of fire and, and shot up the warhawk a little bit more but it really you know it really felt like the clans were dishing out a heck of a lot more firepower than i was i was not able to get most of my mechs in range of their weapons yet which is why i was really trying to run up the middle here as the night star and the catapult were starting to get in a good firing position but most of his mechs except for maybe his linebacker were really able to to shoot at me quite a bit with those those incredible ranges of those clan weapons as you can see here i took some more damage on the night star uh including a headshot there i took some hits on the hunchback which was a bit of a problem uh and of course the locust bit it without even firing a single round now i did return a bit of fire but it really at this point it was still Still pretty one-sided going into turn four now turn four i was really deciding i needed to get that atlas moving up the middle i needed to get that raptor up there to start unloading with inferno rounds i needed to start getting over that hill and intercepting that mad dog mech with all of my jumping mechs my my hunchback and my wolverine and my rifleman really needed to get up there really needed to close the distance I needed to get my mechs in range. It was getting desperate. So I started running as uh, up in front of my Night Star with the Atlas to be able to return some fire. Uh, and, but that also then, of course, drew the attention of most of my enemy mechs uh, because the enemy was seeing the Atlas, and rightly so, as a threat. The, uh, the linebacker did come around the hill there and present itself for some shots. Also, uh, I was able to start shooting at the, uh, the linebacker. Uh, shortly as well now as you can see the raptor was able to unload with some infernal rounds on the warhawk the atlas was able to start taking its first shots with its lrms at the kraken you had the night star shooting at the warhawk and the catapult shooting at the warhawk the mad dog shot at the raptor this round right there uh trying to do some damage to it really didn't do too much the rifleman 2c was able to shoot at the hunchback the linebacker started shooting at the atlas which meant that the atlas from this point on had a, a just you know 
death wish on the uh, on killing that linebacker. The Warhawk and the Kraken also were able to gang up on the Atlas and really start doing some good damage. As you can see here, my Atlas really started to get chewed up. Uh, it was saving the Night Star, but it got hit a lot. I got hit some more, a lot of damage on the center torso with the Hunchback, and the Raptor lost an arm, but was still mostly functional, still able to deal out a lot of, a lot of Inferno rounds. Uh, well, again, the damage, unfortunately, that I was doing on my enemy was not enough to bring anything down or really severely inhibit those clan mechs. Now, moving into round five here, we, uh, again, I was really trying to get those those jumping mechs on the right, uh, having lost their, their little scout mech in the Locust who was coming around the flank. I was trying to get them closer to move up into taking out that Mad Dog. I was also trying to move, again, the Atlas further up the middle, which was a bit of a mistake. Uh, I had, I had rushed him right into the middle where he could be shot at by every clan mech on the field and as good as the armor is on an atlas it's not good enough to stand up against sustained firepower of an entire clan star now my raptor was doing really well considering how much early damage it took running in behind the enemy and unloading with inferno rounds and my catapult and my night star had taken up nice firing positions in some heavy cover in the middle of the board and were doing well to shoot at various mechs around the board so first off you're going to see here that the three jumping mechs on the right had all lined themselves up to be able to fire at the mad boat dog but they really weren't able to do much of anything the mad dog had moved in such a way and got himself into such a position with terrain that he was very difficult to connect with uh so they really really didn't do a whole lot unfortunately next though my knight star turned and decided to fire at the linebacker who had been coming out of the train there the catapult also fired at the linebacker the atlas fired at the linebacker and we did a bunch of damage there uh the mad dog returned fire at the wolverine and did some damage the rifleman 2c hit the raptor the warhawk fired at the atlas and the kraken fired at the wolverine while the linebacker fired at the atlas we're going to see all that damage right now uh, as we show the sheet. So as you can see, I took a bunch of damage, but was spread out on the Raptor. He was still alive. I couldn't believe it at this point. The Atlas, on the other hand, was really starting to get chewed up, but luckily the damage was also kind of spread around. I did take another center torso hit there uh, on the Wolverine, which was kind of tough, and I was doing some nice damage to the linebacker, but it still really wasn't enough going into round six. Uh, my damage was too spread out on the clan max, and I hadn't really severely impeded any of them. Uh, but I just kind of kept going full steam ahead. I was really desperately trying to get the big guns in range. I wanted to get to that 25 damage range with the Atlas where it's heavy Gauss rifle on. I was about to. It was coming in. Unfortunately, again, like I said before, though, that was kind of a bit of a mistake because I was pulling in to very good range for all of the clan mechs to turn and just concentrate fire on the atlas which rightfully so they did um but i was i was desperate to close in and kill that warhawk i really wanted to bring it down and the darn thing just wouldn't die i wasn't able to kill the warhawk here in round six at all even though i continued to just pour on fire at it um as much as i possibly could just could not bring the Warhawk down. I also, this round, threw some, a lot of fire at the linebacker as well as the Atlas. Uh, really, really wanted to bring down the linebacker and had switched over to try to kill it rather than the Warhawk. Uh, I probably should have uh, had more other mechs firing at the linebacker than just the Atlas. Probably should have helped back him up, but everything else is really trying to concentrate fire on the Warhawk while my enemy was concentrating fire on the Atlas and still pouring some fire on the Wolverine who, was, who both were getting really quite chewed up this turn as we're about to see as we show the mech sheets for all of the damage mechs in just a moment here. So here you can see the shots that were lined up from the Atlas to the linebacker. Next we see the catapult and the Night Star shooting at the Warhawk. Uh, in addition, the Hunchback fired at the Warhawk. Uh, did some damage, but again, not enough. Couldn't get the crit rolls to hit. The Raptor was throwing infernal round after infernal round to try to overheat the Warhawk to stop him from firing back. The Warhawk fired at the Atlas to do a bunch of damage. The Linebacker fired at the Atlas to do a bunch of damage. The 
Rifleman 2C fired at the house to do a bunch of damage. Um, yeah, there was just too much going on there. We got some shots there coming from the Kraken at the uh, Wolverine, and the Mad Dog was firing at the Raptor, where um, I believe this turn was finally able to seal the deal. Now, there you see the Atlas took a ludicrous amount of damage. The Raptor finally lost his center torso and went down. The uh, the Wolverine was severely damaged in, in the center torso and side torso areas. I did do some damage to my opponent's max, um, but again, not quite enough to really even things out. I was really hoping to bring down that Warhawk uh, either on round six or round seven. It just really was just... It just wasn't happening. Um, so here, as I came running in, um, again, really desperately trying to finish off the Warhawk and the linebacker, um, I at least was able to have, on round seven, a situation where I was able to kill the linebacker, but I lost the Atlas as well, and unfortunately was not able to seal the deal on the Warhawk. Round after round of, of hot lead and particle projector cannon fire at that Warhawk just, it just wouldn't die. I missed a ludicrous number of critical chance rolls on that Warhawk. It, it just seemed like it had nine lives. I had one turn where I must have done eight critical chance rolls on it in a single turn and failed every one of them, most of them on one of the legs. I was hoping to take out its leg actuators and knock it down and have it not stand up again for the rest of the game, but that did not work. So the Night Star shot at the Warhawk, the Catapult shot at the Warhawk. Uh, after um, they threw a lot of firepower at it and were able to do some damage, but just couldn't kill it. The Atlas fired at the linebacker. Uh, my rifleman backed up the Atlas and also fired at the linebacker, which is why I was able to bring that linebacker down. The Hunchback fired at the Warhawk, desperately trying to kill it. Uh, my Wolverine jumped in behind and fired at the Warhawk. Unfortunately, the Warhawk's rear armor was really undamaged at that point so it didn't do a lot the rifleman 2c fired at the atlas the kraken fired at the atlas the linebacker fired at the atlas and the linebacker pilot and the atlas pilot joined each other in death the mad dog fired at the wolverine chewing up a lot of armor and the warhawk did a lot of damage to the hunchback as we're about to show you so there's the dead alice there's my hunchback having taken a lot of damage and really not doing very well uh the wolverine also took a lot of damage both of them taking a lot of internal structure damage on their center torsos uh and here we see my enemies max also having taken mass amounts of fire and of course the linebacker finally going down so here i was starting to feel like turn eight was make it or break it time and really really it was now there was a lot of firepower that went back and forth a lot of movement um i didn't have that much left on the field and i still just really tried to pour it all on one last chance to, to kill that warhawk and as much as I threw at it, the darn thing still wouldn't die. But my opponent was able to take the opportunity to kill the Hunchback and to, to get two gyro hits on my Night Star. My Night Star fell down and would never stand up again the entire game, which meant that at this point, having lost the Night Star and having lost the Hunchback on this turn, I really felt like I was... Uh, done. There was no chance at all that I was going to be able to win, especially since I had only killed a single mech of my opponents, which was, of course, the linebacker, and I had lost my two largest mechs and then some. So at this point, I called it, and I surrendered. That said, this was a fantastic game. I had an absolute blast. You're about to see the final two damage sheets of the important shots from this round. The rest of them were all over the place, but obviously there's the Hunchback and he died. And next we see the two gyro hits that were done to the Night Star. So that's it. Now let's go to our summer. All right. Uh, so that was a heck of a battle. A lot of back and forth. I did still feel like about halfway through that maybe I was still in it by that last turn where I wasn't able to bring down the Warhawk and um, you were able to drop the... Um, Basically dropped the Night Star and dropped the the Hunchback in that last turn. That was basically a game. That yeah. was that was pretty much it. Yeah. Now I felt the uh, the turn that the Atlas fell down. I was kind of starting to already write off the uh, Massacre because I figured it was going to go at any point. But I couldn't seal um, the deal. But no, I was going to say uh, you had uh, he had LB twenty X. 
and he put five possible crit choices all on the right leg, all structural. Yeah. And none of them came up with a crit. All right, we need um, to we need to address the fact that my luck was ludicrously bad this game. I did make some errors, but also my luck was ludicrously bad. I had a a single turn where I made a total of eight crit chances and failed all of them. Um, I, I think over the course of the game, you probably had close to about 15 to 20 crit chances. I think you got two of them. Yes. And that was on the linebacker, and one yeah. of them was the ER laser and the rear-facing laser, uh, yeah. neither of which ended up having any effect on the game. No. Um, there was a couple of times where I definitely missed on the Atlas. We didn't have any ammo explosions or anything like that, um, but we did have a couple of them where I was able to hit engines or gyros or something else along those lines that definitely slowed your maneuverability down and stopped you from coming at me very quickly. Yes, and the, the big one of the big turns where you thought I was going to kill the Muscari, uh, the Warhawk, um, my my Night Star missed with both Gauss rifles. Again, incredibly bad luck. And he only needed sixes to hit, and he failed to hit with both. Um, yeah, I think it was like a four and a five. Yeah, it was like that. ludicrous. So, um, that and that definitely, that was the point where I was like, okay, I'm not going to kill the Warhawk this turn. If I lose, I think that was that was like the second to last or last turn. I was like, if I wind up losing my Night Star, that's probably going to be game because I had already lost the Atlas. Um, my early on, I was really funny. I would say early on, there was a really funny moment where, um, like, I ran up not realizing how easy it was going to be for you to hit the target with that guy who had gunnery skill one, your pilot who had gunnery skill one and weapon specialist and pulse lasers, and he, he pegged my um, my Raptor halfway across the table. <laughs> not, no, not even halfway. Eighty percent across the yeah. table because I barely moved. Took off all the center torso armor, essentially. And I was like, he... And it was really funny, though, because I was like, the Raptor is not going to survive another turn. And he went on to survive another six turns. Oh, it wasn't even just the uh, the armor. It was the armor and all but one of the structure points. So I, I think oh, yeah. It, it was he, almost he, dead. Yeah. If he had hit anything else, center torso, the rest of the game, he would have been dead. And that's not what happened. You know, he, he, well, that was amazing. He, we, kept, we started joking around that the Raptor was immortal. That was the one thing I got really lucky with, was the Raptor kept surviving, kept surviving. I played him pretty well. I got behind you, and then you weren't able to draw that many weapons on him, and he was able to, to overheat you that one turn and throw a lot of missiles, and then finally you were just like, fine, and you turned and dealt with <laughs> No, it was one of those, um, so I had the Rifleman 2C up on a hill, and I was trying to take pot shots long mm -hmm. range at the Night Star or some of his supporting units, uh, but there was about two or three rounds where I finally just turned on the Raptor, and then I would hit a leg or an arm. I probably right. took off your arms and like a torso. Yeah. Didn't do anything to it. Didn't slow it down. Nothing. Didn't hit any ammo bins. Nothing. No. Finally, I just said, all right, fine. I'm, I'm running my mad dog out there, the, the vulture, and just going, fine. Eat Everything. six SRM6s and then missed. And then fired another yeah. six SRM6s. And I think I got one of them. Um, it, he, he took like six or seven turns to kill. It was insane. Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe it. But then once once he died, because the thing was, all right, so the, the, the locust died first. My Raptor died second. Um, then I managed to bring down your linebacker at the same time you killed my Atlas, which then I was like, but the Warhawk is in big trouble. He's really badly injured. If I take down the Warhawk, I'm still in this. And I couldn't kill the Warhawk, and I couldn't seal the deal. I literally only killed the linebacker. So I, uh, my performance was pretty poor. And I can't blame it all on bad dice rolls. I did make some big mistakes. I should not have exposed both my Night Star and my Atlas in the center of the table as early as I did. And I should not have run the Atlas up the center of the table. I was... I was getting impatient, and I wanted to run up the open lane, but that gave everyone a chance to shoot at him, and you were able to gang up on him, rightfully so, and take a couple turns to literally systematically break down and destroy the Atlas. And that was part of the, the, the weaknesses I thought with that group, is that the Atlas is at a 3-5, hmm. and you have to run them up almost up the middle, but I have so much extended range where I had defense and depth, where I'm popping out with my commander, and I was rolling for fours and fives. So yes. I, essentially, I almost couldn't miss. Not even. I only missed with one shot, I think, within the entire game. Well, your, your commander, so, so again, he had a gunnery skill of one, and then he had, he was basically armed with two large clan poles and, and two, two weapons that... Your PPCs that had a minus two right. because of the card ability. Which means, before even checking anything else, just on his own, he's actually hitting on a negative one or better. So, ha most of the game, he was, e he was usually hitting on threes. Yeah. He spent most of the game hitting on threes. He missed once. 
once, and it was because like I, I raised, raised it up to like a four, and then and then he missed one. Yeah, and then there were like a two or a three, and then um, and then eventually I said, you know what? I have a targeting computer on this thing. Why don't I start making some call shots on his guys while he's on the run? Yeah. Uh, try to get a hunchback. Didn't quite get him. I did get the center torso hit. But not with, but only once. Armor. But only yeah, once. Yeah, but only once. And the, the other one was just like a leg or something like that. The hunchback um, almost killed himself when he fell down, which was really funny. I was going to say, and that was another thing too with our game, is that with the PSRs, we only had one fallen PSR yes. the entire well, game. And it was a hunchback. Yeah. And then my Rifleman yeah. 2C fell down at the very last round. But the Atlas didn't fall. No. My uh, Masakari never well, fell. Well, the Masakari was... was Needing snake eyes to fall, so he he was he was very unlikely to fall. But like the the uh, a lot of my other guys probably should have fallen like three times over until finally I rolled a um, five when I needed a six to stay standing with the hunchback. It was the final time when he actually fell down. He actually ate dirt. Uh, but yeah, otherwise yeah, it was we, we miraculously made like every piloting skill roll. The um the raptor made like three piloting skill rolls. That it was crazy. Like he he kicked, he missed, he still made a piloting skill roll. Stayed standing. Yeah, a a anything that required a crit roll was seven and below, and anything that required a PSO PSR roll was probably eight or nine and up. Like I think we were yeah. making our PSRs handily. I could um, not do a crit to save my life this game, not at all. One of the things that that was kind of funny is we were joking about this in the middle of the game was that the linebacker in the Atlas, despite being disproportionately sized, uh, were mortal foes. Oh, they were definitely. I, I was going to say because. The linebacker took three rounds or so of concerted fire and just couldn't do anything. Well, but then I couldn't his, believe it. I hit him. I hit him like two or three times with twenty-five damage with heavy gauss and just could not do it in the same spot to tear yeah, through. No, he was just laughing it off. But my with four streak SRM sixes, I locked on a total of two or three times by the end of it, yeah. despite having four or five rounds of firing. And again, this isn't firing at twelves or elevens. I needed sevens or nines or tens, I think, a couple of times, and I couldn't Kept lock hitting. on at all. Um, oh, that yes. guy is missing really place. good on paper and then just really unable <laughs> to lock in at all. Um, but it was, yeah, yeah we were joking. Yeah. It was essentially, it got to the point where I was afraid that he was just going to lock him and kick me to death. Um, and so I started walking him uh, backwards up terrain or trying to run up a hill to get kind of fired down at him. Yeah. Um, and we joked, and they did end up both eventually falling in the same round. They did. Um, but I which, is, say, which is, you know, I mean, that, that's that's appropriate considering what mortal foes they were. They fell in the same round. But at the end of it, it was it, when it came down to it at that last round, um, the the Night Star took two gyro hits, so he's never standing up again. He was behind a hill; he couldn't even shoot the target, so he couldn't prop and hit a target. The um, Hunchback had died. I had a Wolverine that was on his last legs, and I had a a catapult and a a rifleman who were still doing okay. But the thing was, I had a almost dead Wolverine, a catapult, and a rifleman versus four climbacks of that. Well, I, I was going to say, you had the un, I had the unhurt Rifleman 2C. Well, I did. I, I hit had, him up the last round. I did hurt him finally the last yes, round. Yes, but I, it was a 25 or 35 points of damage. Yeah. And he did fall a PSR, but it was relatively no, it was, unhurt. It was 40 damage because I hit him with two Gauss rifles and an ERP okay. It was 40 damage in that final round. But that was the first time he'd ever taken damage. Um, and let's see, what else was there? Um, my Kraken was pretty much unhurt. I think yes. he had maybe some spatter damage I on him. Barely like I, I don't know if I touched him at all. Yeah. Um, and then I had my Masakari was still surprisingly standing yeah. and still combat effective. Yeah. Um, Even with all the damage, he, I just couldn't seal the deal. Was, a big part of it was that turn, I couldn't hit him with the Gauss Rivals. Could not seal the deal. And then the uh, the Mad Dog, my Vulture, was yeah. actually still doing relatively well. I don't well. think I ever connected. Plenty I, of ammo. I tried to shoot him, but missed with every weapon I tried to shoot him with. There was one turn where I tried to shoot him with like three guys, and they didn't, they couldn't connect with a single weapon. Yeah, and, that's, uh, yeah. so that's when I, uh, I ran him up on the uh, top of the hill. Yeah. It's kind of a left flanking maneuver to kind of stop his flankers from coming around. Yes. And um, pretty much we fired at each other to no effect. No, yeah. I, I, I'm sure the rabbits were scared and there was some trees that took some damage. But as We chewed up a mechs, lot of grass. A lot uh, of grass and trees. And you actually, um, you did really well towards the end with your Night Star because mm -hmm. I kept shooting at him and I kept hitting. He was behind. Uh, he was up on level one and had level two hill behind him. And there was two or three shots with large pulse lasers that I ended up hitting the hillside and uh, I got, of legs. I got a little lucky with that, but then I still took I still took the gyro hits, and that yep. was it for him. But, you know, it was a really great fight. Um, Nick won fair and square. Uh, really good game. Really fun. Um, I really enjoyed it, even though I got totally dominated. Because at the, at the end of it, it was... It, it, you know, about halfway through the game, I felt like it was still anybody's game. And then once the Atlas went down from then on, it was just, I was sliding downhill. 
And that, that, that's why that final turn, I was like, you know what? My guy's radioing a surrender. That's so it. I think we ended up doing a total of eight or nine rounds. And I think around like five or six, it was his Atlas was going down. And my Mazakari looked like it was going to go down. Yeah. And I had actually started riding it off at this point. But I was like, if, you, if I lose the Atlas and you lose the Mazakari, we're still in Yeah, this. it was pretty even. And he has his Raptor behind me, putting in eight heat, ten yeah. heat around. So I'm only going like, okay, I, even though I have great heat sinks, I can still only do two ER PPCs <laughs> or maybe two ER PPCs and large holes. I wasn't able to be super combat effective with it as I wanted to. But I actually got to the point where I was like, you know what? Screw it. He's going to die this round. And I just went whole hog on him. Uh, and it was just one of those things where he didn't die. And I think the fact that he was able to just get, I didn't play the long game with him. I played the short game, went all in with him. And he was still staying still in the standing. battle. Still standing. And the fact that I did it for two or three rounds, I think threw out enough damage mm -hmm. that even if you'd taken him, he'd already done enough damage to take out at least one of the lighter guys. Um, towards the end. So, were you happy you got to, this was the first time I believe you got to play with your um, big map from the, yes. uh, the were, you, were you happy to get to use it in, the, in this game, get yes. it to the table? Um, so I did have a, a friend of mine uh, pick that up from the, the first Gen Con, that the Catalyst uh, Mega Map, the Neoprene Mega Map that they have. Um, I think there's some trademark issues, so I'm not sure what the final name is that they decided on it. But it was nice to be able to finally pull it out and play on it. It's just been sitting in the corner of my room. Um, I do like the fact that we decided not to play the whole map. I think that would have been, been too big. Mistake. It would have been too big. Well, um, especially for this size game, you're supposed to play about four paper maps and that that the whole map is eight paper map size so we did half of it we did half the map yeah so um, which is, which I, I think right. four paper maps was pretty yeah. good i think we'd had two maps or three maps and try to do them side by side i think it wouldn't have been as good a game no because we didn't have we really need a lot of the room to maneuver um, well it, it helped you to do better i have played with with three maps side by side against clans and, and inner sphere does a lot better in those games because plan starts much closer to you and you can just run up point blank and unload on them um giving you the extra room to maneuver and me making the mistake of not using the terrain as well to my advantage and not hiding my big assets for the first few turns so i could close the distance allowed you to really start doing damage long before i could touch you and that, I think that was a big part of why you won the game. Yeah. Big no, um, I, I was going to say, the, the fact that, uh, that Masakari, um, I was able to throw up damage uh, and fives or sevens. I, the first round, he's like, I didn't know there'll be shots. I was like, no. I, I was like, between the Kraken yeah. with a um, range with the AC2s of 27. Yeah, he was, then, he was, he was connecting on round one, though, Masakari. Yeah, I, I was, yeah. was going to say, I, I planked a headshot uh, round one. Yeah, it was unreal. And yeah. uh, I, I think that kind of egged him on to go, hey, I can't I gotta play the long the game. I've got to close the distance. i got to close the distance. But that meant that uh, you took some, I, I think, some risk. I took some, of the I took some risk that did not pay off. Um, that did not pay off. I did really like the Raptor setup. Even though it seems like it was a one-trick pony, it actually kept paying off. Because it wasn't a one-trick pony because it couldn't deal with it effectively. He did for six turns. And so it was, it. but uh, the, the overheat, you, you did yeah. a number, you did three total rounds on a, a, a two different mechs, I think. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of those things where like I was like I don't want to deal with it but I kind of have to deal with it yeah. but it was dividing my forces up enough um, the so overall strategy I was looking at going advancing towards the middle on a broad front and I was trying to use my two strikers as flankers yeah. or to drive his flank he ran around my flankers and I was like well I'll deal with it when I get to it that never happened until the very end of the game yeah. um, his locust made the mistake of popping out at one point and I went I can take a step back with that Masakari and yeah. unload everything and unfortunately that poor guy got blotted by the sun oh he was obliterated yeah. he, he, he popped up around uh, a mountainside and just got hit with four uh, 50 points of damage never got to fire a single weapon and no. yeah it, pretty much he came around the corner and went no. I'm gonna run in and, and unfortunately he got new yeah he did um, he did so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to comment down below uh, what you thought of this game. Um, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. This captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And again, Nick, thank you so much for playing thank this you game with me. Uh, coming down. Uh, of course. I, I, you know, I, I come down here once a year. We'll have to set up a game the next time I come down. And uh, I thank you. Shout out to uh, Parker Banner, Kent Wayne, and Indeed. Matt Milberg, who's the uh, owner and runner, operator. Um, it, indeed. Yeah, and yes, because they are awesome. If you guys are in this area around uh, Charlotte, check out Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne. Again, please check out the video I did with the spotlight on Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne. This place is awesome. I always come down here when I visit family down in the area. And until next time, game on.